Hello, my name is Giacomo and I'm delighted to uh, welcome you to this cardiovascular research um, on life interview with Professor Rian Tauts. Professor Tauts is the director of the British Heart Foundation Cardiovascular Research Centre here in Glasgow and she's one of the senior authors of um, our recent spotlight issue on vascular smooth muscle cell uh, biology. So welcome Professor Tauts and thank you very much for agreeing to share your thoughts with us today. Giacomo, it's a pleasure and I'm totally delighted to be able to share with you some of my thoughts related to research in general and specifically with respect to this wonderful spotlight issue of focusing on vascular smooth muscle cells. So I'm really delighted and thank well, you. Actually, my first question is really which particular features make uh, vascular smooth muscle cells um, one of the most interesting aspects of your research? So I've been involved in cardiovascular research for probably 20 years now or more actually and my area of research is always related to understanding the molecular and vascular biology of hypertension and um, what I've begun to realize is that the integrity of the vasculature is so important not only for hypertension but I think for all chronic diseases today with res especially with respect to the small vessels and we know what's absolutely critical in terms of maintaining vascular health and implications in vascular pathology and um, really relates in large part to the function of vascular smooth muscle cells. And so I've been intrigued for many, many years um, in understanding firstly how vascular smooth muscle cells are regulated and controlled normally and very importantly what is it that causes vascular smooth muscle cells to undergo these amazing phenotypic changes that occur with disease processes? It, it's mind-boggling to think how plastic and dynamic vascular smooth muscle cells really are, how they can go from an almost um, contractile phenotype, which is really, I guess, their normal state uh, in terms of physiological processes, to very, very um, different uh, phenotypic characteristics where they become secretory, migratory, proliferative. And so understanding that incredible ability to undergo those phenotypic changes has really been a fascination for me. So yes, I, I have a love for vascular smooth muscle cells. I find them really interesting and um, most importantly in trying to understand how they influence vascular function both in health and disease. Well, thank you. And the topic that you covered in your um, uh, review was the contraction of vascular smooth muscle cells. But what have you enjoyed most when reading the other highlights of our spotlight issue? Well, I think what's very nice about the spotlight issue is it could almost be considered as a mini textbook of vascular smooth muscle. Um, because the range of topics is very broad, yet the reviews themselves are very, very comprehensive. They're very up to date. They consider the state of the art technologies and certainly the reviews are at the forefront in terms of knowledge. There have been so many interesting topics that are included in this compendium, if you like, or the spotlight issue of vascular smooth muscles. But I really like the fact that um, the topics that have been covered have ranged from the normal physiology or function of vascular smooth muscle right to um, the pathologic processes. And very importantly, I think what else the spotlight issue does is that it brings into the realm of vascular biology new advances in the field. For example, the, the importance of the microRNAs, for example, the transition from one phenotype to the other, the um, importance of calcification of vascular smooth muscle in terms of not only atherosclerotic changes, but actually vascular calcification in disease. So um, also non-coding RNA, of course, is another big area in terms of what defines the status of vascular smooth muscle. So it's been a, 
a really a fantastic spotlight issue. And as I said, for me, it's almost a mini textbook of the most up-to-date um, knowledge and information about vascular smith muscle physiology and pathology. Well, and among all these novelties, so which new trajectories uh, for research in vascular smooth muscle cells and hypertension can you foresee now? We're beginning to appreciate that the vasculature does undergo tremendous changes in disease, including in hypertension, n new strategies and moving forward in, um, in research. For me, what's going to be important is how do we tackle the vasculature to maintain it in a healthy um, condition. So I think approaches to ensuring a vascular wall, an endothelium that's intact, that is healthy, is what is going to be important. Whether this means prevention of vascular injury or reversal of um, an injured vessel are the areas that um, I think will be important. The approaches we use will be probably quite innovative um, as we learn more about, as I said, these phenotypic changes that occur with disease. Um, you know, the exciting world of um, gene therapy, of, um, of, of targeting microRNAs, these new, the whole RNA biology is of course important but also targeting um, the proteins um, in terms of modification of the state of activity through post-translational modification changes. So I think there's lots of exciting things that could be done, but for me, maintaining a healthy endothelium, a healthy vascular walls, where we should be going in terms of um, securing or preventing future vascular and cardiovascular disease. Well, what clearly uh, characterizes you uh, very strongly is uh, this combination of deep clinical expertise and dedication to the understanding of basic mechanisms. So how do you combine um, these two in your vision of translational medicine and why is it so important? Giacomo, you bring up a very important um, point and you're absolutely right at the end of the day we need to um, tackle um, these um, vascular smooth muscle cells, if you like, um, in the clinic where we see patients who come with bad vascular disease and morbidity associated with vascular injury, you know, the consequences of hypertension, for example, or the target organ damage, probably relates in large part to um, vascular injury or endothelial dysfunction. I think what we need to do in terms of taking the research forward is that we need to appreciate that while we have fantastic experimental models that allow us to dissect out pathways and mechanisms and um, to learn about new therapeutic strategies, take observations made in the clinic to meaningful um, research questions. And I think this concept of reverse translational research, you know, going from the bedside where we make an observation to the bench where we could dissect out some pathways and then back to the bed or to the clinic is, um, for me, very, very important. So um, in terms of translational research, it's really that integration of probably reverse translation and um, and once we've identified the mechanisms in the preclinical models, as I said, making sure that those strategies work in the patients. Well, Professor Tauts, I would like to thank you once again for the amazing opportunity that you gave us. And I would also like to thank the audience for watching us and uh, not forgetting to read our uh, recent spotlight issue on vascular smooth muscle cell biology. Thank you very much. <laughs>